Good morning and a happy Wednesday from Cashers, North Carolina. It's good to pray with you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well in your body, in your mind, in your soul. And hope your family and friends are doing the same. Give you just a moment to send yourselves as usual, and then we will begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit, that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. We continue reading from the first letter of John, chapter 2. I am writing you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I am writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father but from the world, and the world and its desires are passing away but those who do the will of God live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I mean, the Word of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Our canticle comes from the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now reading from the Gospel, <laughs> the Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be as one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, may they also be in us, 
so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you that have sent me, that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I adjust the camera a little bit here. Oops, there we go. To look at the cross. We will once again say our prayers. Using the shape of the cross as our guide. Lord Jesus Christ, you hung upon the cross an act of love, an act of passion. We come to you today in prayer with love and with thanks for that and so many other gifts, but particularly the gift of your resurrection, that the cross that death did not have the last word, and that as we have read this morning, your love for us draws us to you and draws us to the Father to all be as one. We give you thanks for that gift and the gift of your spirit, the gift of Holy Scripture, the gift of your church, the gift of sacraments of baptism and Eucharist. We give you thanks for music. We give you thanks for food and all the wonderful ways that it is prepared and the people who have prepared it. We give you thanks for other basic necessities like clothing and transportation, water, air, flowers that bloom, birds and butterflies and bees, and all the creatures and all the cycle of life that is there. May we also respect it in your name because it is yours. We thank you for our families, for our wives and for our husbands, for our daughters and for our sons, for parents, aunts, uncles, and cousins, for those who are near and those who are far, those who are alone, those who are joyful, those who are anxious. We give you thanks for those people with whom we work and for those jobs, whether we are paid for them or not, that work you have given us to do in the world and the people you have put beside us to, to work as a body, as a kingdom. We give you thanks for all those churches in which we have been nurtured in the faith, churches to which we've not just attended, but that we have also belonged. We give you thanks for our different schools, our different teachers in life. and the special opportunities we've had to 
see different parts of the world. Again, to understand the diversity and beauty and glory of your creation. For all those opportunities, Lord, you have given us to grow. To step outside ourselves, to step outside what may have what may now look like a narrower path to a wider path, a path of understanding, a path of compassion. Continue, we pray, to help us grow. At the foot of the cross, Lord, we offer to you again our confession, those sins that have stunted our growth, shall we say, kept us from growing or even grown in the wrong direction. We pray that those things that we took on for our Lenten disciplines may still be something that we can now put aside and put aside permanently. Forgive us our sins, Lord, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Our individual sins, our secret sins, our corporate sins. We have, we have participated as a body in ways that are oppressing others through racism, through financial success and gain. All those things we do, Lord, with some or a lot of selfishness. Forgive us. Hear our repentance and grant us amendment of life. At the center of the cross, we remember your Son, who offered himself there for us, an act of love, an act of passion. We offer ourselves to you today, again, for that work that you have given us to do. Not focused on our selfish, more nearsighted to-do list, but on the bigger picture. On reflecting your love through our faith in action. Help us, Lord, to be ones who can offer our time, our skills, our talents, our treasure in your service. On the left arm of the cross, Lord, we pray for others. We pray particularly for those who are sick, for those who are lonely, for those who are oppressed, or living in detention centers or refugee camps or just in abject poverty and they have and their parents have and their parents have. For that unfortunate cycle, Lord, open new doors for them and open our eyes that we can help them. those who are victims of brutality and of mistakes, for those whose hearts and ears are closed, that they may be opened to see what they have not seen, including us. We pray for those who are looking for work, those who are at the point of despair where they are considering suicide, that they may turn their hearts to see just at least one thing good that will change their hearts and bring them back to you. We pray for those who are fighting addictions of any kind, fighting disease of any kind, particularly dementia or Alzheimer's, cancer, or arthritis, and some other kind of skeletal pain for those who are grieving. And lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves, for, for our souls, for our bodies, that we may seek and serve you, Christ, in all persons, and Love our neighbor as ourself, and even more importantly, love one another as you have loved us. 
respecting the dignity of every human being because every human being has come from you. And help us individually, Lord, to work towards that unity of which John spoke and of which Jesus spoke. That you and the Father are one and we and you are one so that we are one with the Father and that unity extends around the globe for all humanity and all creation which you died to redeem. Amen. And now the may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore.